Okay, so, so far we've been dealing with bounded monotonic sequences and we were able to say that any bounded monotonic sequence converges. That was theorem 10.2 and that's a, quite a nice little uh, fact to have at our disposal now. But now let's talk about what can happen when a monotonic sequence is unbounded, okay? Uh, and actually before I even really uh, discuss this at all, I want to give you guys a quick uh, lecture question here. Okay, so this is again one of those questions which uh, you should submit on your homework. All right, so this will be lecture five, question one. Okay, uh, can a monotonic sequence be unbounded in both directions at once. Okay, so this is a fairly simple little question. Just take a little bit to think about it, pause the video, write down your answer, and then I'll explain it. Okay, so basically the answer to this question is no. Uh, and it's fairly simple to see why. So uh, if Sn is increasing, then S1 is a lower bound on the values of the sequence, right? If it's decreasing, S1 is an upper bound. So it's always bounded uh, in one, at least one direction if it's monotonic, okay? Very good. So let's go ahead and move on. So, okay, let's talk about what happens when a monotonic sequence is unbounded. So what I just talked about already shows us that, you know, not, not just anything can happen, okay? Uh, and in fact, um, we have a theorem which tells us, so I'm going to state the theorem now. Uh, this is theorem 10.4. Uh, which deals with unbounded increasing and decreasing sequences. So if Sn is an unbounded increasing uh, sequence, then the limit of Sn is positive infinity. And if it's a uh, an unbounded decreasing sequence, then the limit is negative infinity. Okay? So, well, let me, it doesn't look too good. Let me at least write this part out. Right? So, uh, basically, the conclusion here is actually that for monotonic sequences, no matter what happens, actually, the, the symbol limit of Sn always makes sense. It's never, uh, monotonic sequences can never diverge in a way that would not allow us to say that the limit exists, right? So either a monotonic sequence is bounded, in which case it converges and the limit is a real number, or it's unbounded, in which case it diverges to either plus or minus infinity, depending on whether it's increasing or decreasing, okay? but the limit always exists in, in some sense, all right? So I'm just gonna prove the, uh, the first part of this theorem because again, there's kind of this symmetry principle where the proof of the second part is basically identical to the first one, but with some you know, inequalities flipped around and a plus change to a minus or whatever. So let's just talk about uh, increasing unbounded sequences, okay? Now also note, like there's a subtlety of the language here, right? Which is that here we're saying Sn is an unbounded increasing sequence. Okay, now the term unbounded on its own 
doesn't tell us whether the sequence should be unbounded above or unbounded below, right? Remember that being bounded is being bounded in both directions. So being unbounded is being unbounded in at least one direction, possibly both, right? But, but the thing is, because we know the sequ sequence is increasing, the fact that it's unbounded means that actually it has to be unbounded from above because we do know that it has to be bounded below by just the first term of the sequence, right? So really, you could replace this with uh, un, uh, unbounded above specifically, right? Uh, but it's just sort of, it's more concise and it makes it feel like the statement is a little bit more powerful if you just phrase it in terms of the sequence being unbounded, okay? So let's uh, prove this, okay? So now remember, think about what our goal is here. So, so let SN be an unbounded increasing sequence, right? Then as we said before, SN is not bounded above, right? Since we know SN is uh, bounded below by S1. That's enough for us to just say that SN is not bounded above because, um, uh, because if it were bounded above, then it would be bounded in both directions. So, okay, SN is not bounded above, good. Now, our goal is to show that SN diverges to positive infinity, right? So let's recall the definition of what it means to diverge to positive infinity. What that means is that we have to be able to let M be a real number and then show that there exists a capital N such that SN is greater than M for all little n bigger than capital N, right? So we want to pick capital N. So now the question is, first of all, and, and so maybe recall, recall the uh, proof that we did in theorem 10.2 for bounded uh, increasing sequences showing that they converge, right? Uh, we used a fact about them, which is that once they get above you know, a certain level, once they get cer a certain distance away from the limit, because of the fact that they have to keep increasing, um, that's enough. To, it's enough to find a single term, which is like within epsilon of the limit. And then all the rest of them after that automatically have to be within epsilon of the limit. There's a similar thing here, which is that once, because SN is increasing, once you find a term of SN, which is um, bigger than the value M, all of the terms after that also have to be bigger than M because SN has to keep increasing from there. Okay, so the real question is, how do we know that there is a term SN, which is bigger than M? Well, really, that's just because, so let me kind of, you know, write down some of what I'm saying here. So how do, we know S n is bigger than M for even one value of N. Well, let's imagine what would happen if it weren't, right? Then the, the, if S n were not bigger than M for any value of N, that would mean that S n is actually less than or equal to M for all values of N, right? But that would be contradicting the idea that SN is not bounded above, right? We showed that where we, we, you know, we stated, we argued that SN is not bounded above. So the fact that SN is not bounded above above shows us that there exists a capital N. Then, so here, right, um, this is because SN it's not bounded above, right? There exists a capital N such that um, S capital N is greater than M. Then for N greater than capital N, SN is greater than M because SN is increasing, right? So SN diverges to infinity, right? We did it. Uh, all we had to do was find this capital N such that 
S little n is bigger than M for all little n bigger than capital N. And that's exactly what we did. So uh, that's the proof that um, increasing or that, well, that unbounded monotone sequences always diverge to either plus or minus infinity, depending on whether, um, right, yeah, depending on whether uh, the sequence is increasing or decreasing. So I'll just return to the statement that I made before because in the book, they um, state this is a corollary. Uh, so let me erase some stuff. just to summarize what we know now about, um, about monotone sequences. So this is corollary 10.5, which basically says if Sn is monotone, then limit of Sn is meaningful, right? In the sense that either it's a real number or it's plus or minus infinity, right? So here's the structure of this. Um, uh, is it bounded? So yes, then Sn converges, right? So here, limit of Sn is a real number. If it's not, then is it increasing? Right. If it's increasing, then uh, limit of Sn is infinity. And if it's not, then it's decreasing. and the limit of Sn is negative infinity. But in any case, we always assign some kind of a quote unquote value to the limit of Sn, okay? Okay, so that's all for this part. And in the next one, we'll talk about limit superior and limit inferior, which I will say are somewhat challenging concepts. So uh, definitely be ready to um, be thinking quite hard about these uh, these ideas.